Welcome to the Doggy Dojo. I'm your host, Susan Light, a Los Angeles-based dog trainer on a quest to become worthy of the title Sensei of the Doggy Dojo. Today we're discussing canine body language. Understanding canine body language doesn't seem to come naturally to us humans, which is why learning about it is a crucial aspect of dog training and really interacting safely with dogs in any situation. My guest creates infographics for dog training professionals, veterinarians, behaviorists, and welfare groups who advocate for humane animal training methods. Her dog body language artwork has been featured in art museums, on television and worldwide educational media campaigns and her dogs of the world poster series has been a viral hit her first book doggy language came out in 2020 and should be required reading for anyone with a dog i'm super excited to welcome lily chin lily welcome to the podcast hi susan thank you for having me I'm super excited to have you here to talk about doggy body language because anytime canine body language comes up, your name comes up because you've just created so many amazing resources for people. We're always referring people to your work, but let's start all the way back at the beginning. How did you get started drawing? Um, I've been drawing ever since I was a little kid. I was born in Malaysia, so which is where I grew up, and then I moved to Australia and went to school there for Uh, and worked there for 20 years and then I moved to the US and um, so my background is in animation like I used to work in the 2D animation industry and I don't know if people know what 2D is but that (laughs) traditional pencil and paper animation but not not computer generated Um, so I do I've done a lot of drawing in my life so far And I became a self-employed illustrator about 10 years ago. That's how doggy drawing started and and how I ended up doing what I'm doing now. So I know that this started with your dog, Boogie. Uh, Would you tell us the story of Boogie and, and how he got you started down this path of using your art to learn about canine body language and teach others about it? Okay, so this is a bit of a long story, but I'll try and keep it short. I love it. (laughs) <laughs> so I adopted Boogie. He was my first adopted dog from Boston Buddies Rescue back in 2007. And um, I had never had a dog before. So I, I was a new dog owner and I didn't know anything. And Boogie bit somebody and almost had me evicted from my apartment. Um, so in that mad panic and devastation, I, you know, I had to find a way to fix the problem because I was, my landlord said either get rid of the dog or get rid of or move out. Mm. Uh, So I looked for a dog trainer on Google without knowing any better. And when all I knew at the time was the dog whisper show. Um, And I was taught to use very aversive methods to train Mm. him like prong collar and, um, you know, very punitive ways and he got worse he yeah. became more aggressive more fearful understandably because he yeah. just didn't learn to like people he got more scared and mistrustful of the world which is exactly what i would expect to happen if you introduce diversive methods especially to a fearful or to a sensitive dog exactly yeah. and he was a very sensitive dog and um i went on to doctor.com and and asked for advice. And I said, I don't understand how I can make my dog like people with a prong collar. And, you know, I I got connected with Grisha Stewart, who is a dog dog trainer. And she said, get rid of the prong collar, look into something called BAT, which is what I'm developing, behavior adjustment training. But um, I also, at the time, hired a different dog trainer and I started reading because I needed to, I felt I needed to educate myself. There has to be some other way, you know, that was what I was thinking at the time, which is how I discovered clicker training and um, the work of Karen Pryor and, Mm. and, uh, and we hired Sarah Owings who became my new trainer and she just introduced me to the work of Turit Rugas and she gave me all these books and videos and she said, well, you want to know, learn your dog's body language. And uh, and I remember watching, you know, a video of myself with Boogie and suddenly I was seeing lip licks and head turns and eye blinks and yawns and all these things I couldn't see before. And and then looking at Turit Rugas books on 
on calming the calming signals. signals yeah and the dvd as well which was amazing and i remember thinking why isn't this knowledge why don't people know about this why isn't this on the dog whisperer show why do we not know that dogs you have these signals to communicate what they're feeling so i drew a poster called doggy language starring Boogie the boston terrier which was my dog because I, I mean once you see these things you can't unsee them absolutely and um i had it took me by surprise that it went viral and um and then grisha hired me to illustrate her book and dr sophia yin hired me to illustrate body language charts showing signs of stress mm -hmm. and i guess that was how it all started then i sort of became the illustrator for dog body language for shelters and vets and you know behavior consultants and um yeah so that that's how, that's really how it started it's crazy to me because anytime I'm trying to teach someone about doggy body language, and I know I'm not alone in this, we're reaching out for resources that you've created. And it's just mind boggling to me that, you know, as recent as 10 years ago, they didn't exist. You had to create them from scratch. And I'm so thankful that you did. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm so glad that uh, it's, it's known now, I guess it's better known the concept. It is better known for sure, but it needs to be a lot better known. It's not universally known, and it certainly doesn't come naturally to people. I see dog body language misinterpreted all the time. Yeah. I remember, this is going back 10 years, um, I had a neighbor who was yelling at their dog, and their dog ran under a car, and, and she was yelling at him to come out of the, from under the car, and the dog had um, was cowering, and the tail was tucked. And I said to this neighbor, um, I think your dog is really scared. And she said, he's not scared. And she just snapped back at me like, like I had just insulted her <laughs> or that. I mean, so, you know, I, I, I think, like I said, I mean, you, if you don't know what yeah. tucked tail means, then you could easily assume that, you know, the other person's just making it up. Um, right. So, yeah. It, uh, this knowledge sort of needs to be more normalized. I totally agree. So where did you study for this knowledge? Like you mentioned Calming Signals, which is an awesome book. It's a very short book. You know, it, it's totally accessible for anybody that wants to learn about that. Um, you mentioned Bat by Grisha Stewart. Um, what other ways did you educate yourself on canine body language? I think it was just because I've been doing a lot of drawing and working with dog trainers over the past 10 years, I, I learned, I mean, I've just had the privilege of learning from people I work with or people I work for. So a lot of my education came from my own dog, like training my own dog, learning, getting to know my own dog, Boogie, as well as the work I did for trainers. So yeah, a combination of all those things. And um, the, the book came about actually, it, I was approached by Summersdale Publishers. It was their idea. They approached me because they saw the doggy language poster and said, how do you feel about turning this into a book? And um, so that was like a great opportunity for me to draw other dogs, not just my dog, <laughs> because Boogie is a Boston Terrier and he doesn't have a tail. So that yeah. was, uh, and you know, he's got upright ears and there are different uh, body types. With Absolutely. Dogs. So yeah. yeah. I'm going to take a quick break while I'm butting in right now uh, to anyone who's listening to the audio and thinking, oh, it sounds weird. Um, Lily and I did have technical difficulties. It's a long story, but basically we ended up recording on a single audio track. And normally I try to record on separate audio tracks, myself and my guest. Um, and Lily was just louder than I was. So I have tried to kind of come in and re-record my questions uh, so that I'm not so quiet and I'm not so muffled. But you sort of hear sometimes when I'm just giving little, uh-huh, yeah, in with her dialogue because I didn't want to um, interrupt her. So um, that's what's going on if you were wondering what's going on with the audio this time. But uh, Lily sounded so good and it was just me that uh, needed to be bumped up a little bit. But we're going to take a quick break. And remember, you can check out Lily at doggydrawings.net where you can order a signed copy of her book, Doggy Language. Um, and there's also tons of other dog artwork, uh, pins, cards. You can even order a personal 
personalized drawing of your pet. And remember, Lily spells doggy, D-O-G-G-I-E. And so it's doggydrawings.net, or you can go straight to doggylanguagebook.com. We'll be right back. Such a good point you were making about Boogie um, because all breeds look so different, different kinds of ears, different kinds of tails, or God forbid, uh, docked tails and, and cropped ears. And it really affects uh, sometimes a breed's ability to communicate with this body language. Um, what's the most common misconception that you run into about uh, doggy body language? I think um, from my own personal experience is that people assume that if your dog is not barking, growling, lunging, and if they're still, then they're calm and relaxed. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> um, because a dog could be shut down or frozen mm-hmm. or they could be stiff in that stillness, which means they're not relaxed and they're not comfortable. Great point. Uh, there's, you think of fight or flight. For dogs, we say there's fight, flight, or freeze. So um, that stillness, definitely not always relaxed. Yeah, I think it also takes getting to know your own dog because it could be very subtle. Um, I'm speaking from my own experience with Boogie. He, If he was nervous around a stranger, he would freeze. And it's probably not obvious to other people, but it's very obvious to me because I, I know him. So I, yeah. I think, um, you know, th- which is why in my book, Doggy Language, I make a point of getting to know your own dog as an individual. Yeah. So that you can identify what's normal and what's not. Absolutely. What's relaxed and what, what's stress. Yeah, that's such a good point. I think um, people can learn a lot from looking at, uh, you know, everybody who has a dog, you've got hundreds of pictures and videos of your dog on your phone right now. Like, um, sit down with the book and look through it because I think it's a lot easier to pick these things out, especially when you're learning. Um, It happens so fast sometimes, but when it's just one single picture or like a video you can watch over and over and kind of pause, you can learn a lot more um, really studying, uh, you know, your dog's eyes and the ear position and looking for the lip licks and, you know, where they're looking and that kind of thing. Have you come across anybody using your art in an unexpected way? Is it like in a good way or a bad way? <laughs> Either one. Either like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. That's so interesting. Or like, oh, I had no idea they were going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess every time I get an email that it's helped, you know, my art has helped somebody or, you know, from shelters or vets or people who have rescued a dog and, and they've learned something. I mean, that's always, it's always a great feeling, like, you know, I'm very grateful when people tell me that. And um, also I know that there've been educational programs where they've used my posters. For example, um, the World Health Organization used my drawings for an anti-rabies program. Whoa. Because it was like, they said, well, because obviously rabies is spread by dog bite. Yeah. Dog bite prevention requires... Oh, wow. Understanding body language. <laughs> right. Wow! Yeah, that's awesome. And um, there was a, there were police officers who were trained using my drawings as well because there was an incident several years ago. I suppose it happens quite frequently where police shoot dogs on site because they can't oh. tell if the dog is being aggressive or not. I see. Um, so I, I've seen. I've, I've been informed that my work has been used for those that sort of training. Wow. And um, I, ha- I had a job a couple of years ago, and that was for a fire firefighting group in Switzerland um, where they wanted body language images to teach the firefighters oh. how to read dog, dog body language when they're entering a home so they know that, that if that dog is scared or stressed or relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is so cool. And it really shows that everybody that comes into contact with dogs uh, on a regular basis or in their profession uh, should learn canine body language. 
yeah i mean on a more mundane level it's like everybody with a reactive dog could learn could oh yeah work from you know knowing where that threshold is for their own dog I totally agree. I, I actually think not just reactive dog owners, but any owner, if you're taking your dog to the dog park or you're taking them on walks, you would really benefit from knowing uh, body language. So you can watch your dog. You can uh, really know what the dog is feeling that's walking up to you, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Do you have a favorite breed to draw? Is it Boogie? Is it Boston Terrier? Um, it is Boogie. It, <laughs> yeah. So so Boogie passed away at the oh, end of twenty twenty. So I, yeah, that's so rough. It's it's hard, uh, but I would have said Boogie, Bo- the Boston Terrier, because you know he was my dog. So I'm biased, as we all yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with drawing all dogs. Like I mean, I enjoy drawing all dogs. That's awesome. And now you have two cats. Um, I had cats when I was much younger, when I was living in Australia, but I don't really count the, that time of because I was a terrible cat owner and I didn't know anything, so <laughs> that's really awful. <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning to do it right this time. We, uh, my, my husband and I just adopted these two cats last year after Boogie passed away. Yeah, cats are so different. Um, I have two cats too. It's kind of a weird thing we have in common that uh, we're both who work in the dog industry, but uh, have two cats. <laughs> um, so is cat body language next? I would love that. Um, I am learning. I am doing my research. I'm... <laughs> yeah, there's not as much out there as there is for dogs. No. Yeah, I I'm I would be excited to to read something that you put together. I have been also trying to learn about uh feline body language and things because we adopted a new cat uh this summer lily and she used to live outside and she uh, is a little firecracker and so i'm learning about you know feline body language and and um cat behavior modification for her and one thing that i read said that they their faces are not as expressive as dogs faces are so there's certainly things like down their body their position their vocalizations that we can look at to understand how they're feeling but as far as their actual faces they're just not as expressive as dogs are yeah you kind of do have to look at the whole picture and the context is i mean they react they respond to sounds and smells and things that we don't we we may not be aware of and you think oh well, was it me or was it something else <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's been fun to learn more because I had uh, those two cats for like 12 years, but they were so easy that I never really had to learn that much about them. Yeah, my cats are not that easy because they're both very scared, shy cats. Yeah. I could talk about cats all day, but uh, moving, you know, from dogs to cats to other species, you draw tons of different kinds of animals. Um, and But am I correct that it's only dogs that it's body language focused? So I, I also have an online store on Etsy and on my website. So I, I do create artwork of animals other species and i do custom portraits and i have dog pins that i sell and posters and cards so not not strictly dogs i wonder do you think it was easier for you to pick up on doggy body language because you're an artist and you have trained yourself to see small details like positions of eyes and ears and things i don't know (laughs) i don't know um if that's because i'm an artist or if it's just because i had i had to train my dog and i had to deal with his behavioral issues that i had to learn these things and focus on them um i guess i'm also a naturally sort of um how do you say it i'm slightly observant I was going to say, like, I was going to pick him for a negative word, but observing this oh, good. <laughs> like, I'm just, like, paranoid or, you know, I'm easily freaked out or, or I'm thinking. Oh, in a dog, know. we would call that hyper We would call that hypervigilant. Hypervigilant, there you go. <laughs> like, I'm looking at my cat thinking, is he okay? Is he scared? Is he in pain? Is he oh. happy? <laughs> so I do sort of, you know pay close attention 
yeah. trying to figure out what it all means. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But the first step, I think, really is to train yourself to watch, to train yourself to look and observe these things. So this is to divert slightly from dogs and into cats. Like, yes. I mean, I did a course recently called Cat Facts, which is C-A-T-F-A-C-S, and it, it was a workshop on noticing, analyzing facial movements in dogs and cats and you know, there's a whole range of species. And I picked the cat one because I have cats right now. And it was hard. I mean, you, uh, part of the test was you watched videos and you had to code all the different movements that you can see in a like a really short video clip. Like, you know, are the ears moving this way or that way? And what are the eyes doing? What is the mouth doing? What are the whiskers doing? And it was it, it wasn't easy. Because there's yeah. so much going on in so quickly, and and um, you know, I would have to train myself to see all those things. Absolutely, and I don't want people who are listening to feel like discouraged and think, "Oh my God, there's so many things I would need to learn," and it sounds really hard. Because um, you will be amazed how quickly you can pick some of this stuff up and like Lily said before like as soon as you see it you can't unsee it and I think Lily's book Doggy Language is a great place to start obviously if you want to try on talking terms with dogs calming signals uh, these are the things that you can start looking for and you're going to start seeing that there's just a ton of communication coming from your dog and um, you don't have to wait until they're growling and biting other dogs before you understand that they're uncomfortable and they're in a comfortable situation absolutely and like you said, like there is a communication happening every time a dog vocalizes or they they do a behavior. And I think um, the other thing that is, I guess people don't usually talk about is the context of like why, what is the reason for that behavior? Like if a dog is barking or lunging, um, people just assume their dog is being bad, right? Yeah. They, ask what do their dog want like does that yeah. dog want distance or do they want or do they want more attention or do they want something else like yeah you know it, it's typical for people to jump to the conclusion that they have a naughty dog or a bad dog yeah or they're sort of acting out or whatever when yeah. it's a communication a request for something quite specific Thank you, Lily, for joining me today. My biggest takeaways from this conversation are that doggy body language is worth learning if you have any contact with dogs and absolutely essential if you work with dogs in stressful situations or you have a reactive dog yourself. It can seem overwhelming, but Lily's book, Doggy Language, actually makes it really simple. And you guys, it's not expensive either. You'll be amazed when your eyes are opened to all the ways your dog is already telling you how they feel. Thank you for stopping by the dojo to learn with me this week. This is your aspiring sensei, Susan Light, signing off. You can find me at doggydojopodcast.com or I'm Susan Light LA on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. The music was written by Mac Light. You can find him at maclightsongwriter.com. If you like the show, you can support it by subscribing, sharing it with your friends, rating it, and reviewing it on Apple Podcasts. I'll be back in two weeks with another new episode of the Doggy Dojo.